Okay, I've begun to start to protect the core, uh, the plywood core that is in the back here uh, between the fiberglass. So this was the starboard cleat, aft cleat. Over drilled the holes, uh, put some tape in the bottom, filled them with uh, some slightly thickened epoxy. These are the cowl vents for the blower, or the fan, the bilge fan. I kind of recessed the plywood in there and uh, even more so where the screw holes go. Fill that with thickened epoxy and then once that's dry I will just drill and reinstall those. A little more detail on how I'm drilling, or rather over drilling, these holes uh, to fill with epoxy. Um, because this is a, at least this area, is a plywood uh, core, um, essentially I just over drill and then fill it with thickened epoxy. However, if it was a balsa, which I do have some areas that are balsa, I would use a, um, a little router bit or rasp um, for a Dremel and go in there and just take out the core while leaving the fiberglass intact. But because this is plywood and the, the strands, the wood fibers are actually going horizontally instead of vertically, uh, it makes sense to just over drill it this way. Protected the core for the pedestal guard. That's for the pedestal itself, the mounting holes for the pedestal, and the pedestal guard feet. Replacing the balsa core around the chain plates, uh, you can see that I, I've dug out uh, the rotten part here. Uh, you can see the fiberglass still intact in this in this area um, you uh, use some thickened epoxy to get it in there um, once I kind of plug up the area there for the chain plate the the bottom opening um, I will pour in some slightly thickened epoxy from the top uh, which will fill in uh, a lot of the voids that are probably you know in this area here and then and then kind of drill it out from the top um, i still do need to put in a bit more epoxy in here here um, but other than that this should be a relatively easy uh, solution here i'm just going to glass put some fiberglass back on here and then um, epoxy on the fiberglass liner and uh, that should do it, other than maybe uh, fairing uh, the, the crack for the fiberglass liner and then painting it. And now I've come to the part that I've actually been looking forward to, and that is to redo, reconfigure the galley area here. Uh, so I'll be starting with the water tank, or water tanks rather, and what I've decided to do is put a 10 gallon tank under each uh, settee there uh, and valve between them as well as uh, putting in a valve to drain them uh, at a low point. Um, although that's only a total of 20 gallons, I do have a lot of room under the cabin sole there to put in a flexible uh, 30 to 40 gallon um, bladder. I uh, also have a lot of room here in this part of the bilge. Uh, I've calculated that I can fit easily three two and a half gallon jerry cans. Uh, and if needed, I could also put in uh, a couple of five gallon jerry cans in the, uh, in the lazarette. So uh, once that is finished, um, or rather, I'm going to start with, of course, taking apart the, the galley as it stands, um, taking the sink out, even though I'm not going to be replacing that. The faucet there, uh, that's an electric faucet, it's just a switch and it leads to a pump. 
which is actually new, but and it, that did come with a boat, but I think I'm going to uh, eventually replace that with a manual type. Um, I also have a foot pump uh, and another a faucet that I'm going to use for salt water. Um, as far as this area, I'm going to probably close off this shelf. I'll maybe put some sliders in there. That I've seen a picture of someone who did that on a Contessa 26 forum, and that looked pretty good. Uh, this is the cooler right now. Actually, Dodgers in there. Um, I'm planning to take that out. I'm going to put a stove in there, gimbaled. Some more storage in the back, some more storage underneath. Possibly put in a smaller cooler area here. Some of the uh, later model contestants did have that. Um, as well as doing some storage in this area here, uh, right behind there on both sides. So we'll see how that comes. I was able to strip out all the various components here. Um, I did have to cut this apart to get the cooler out, but uh, that was something I needed to do anyway. And then uh, I could not fit the cooler outside the companion way. <laughs> so I had to cut that. Um, but this opening should allow me to be able to get the tank under the settee. Um, on this side, I'm probably gonna have to cut into this small bulkhead and then uh, re-glass it on. I've gone ahead and cut out the bulkhead here that I just showed and shown. Um, and I'm able to get the 10 gallon tank in obviously. Um, I built this little platform or shelf uh, that I need to glass on but uh, to make things a little bit more complicated, the depth transducer is in this area. So I may very well glass this entire platform in, close it off on the other side, put a stainless steel deck plate that I have uh, to make it watertight in case this ever um, was damaged and started leaking or whatever. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to leave it like this. I've glassed the platform to the hull, uh, also uh, coated the platform itself in epoxy, uh, then bilge coat, uh, painted it with bilge coat, and uh, attached these uh, stainless cleats for the straps. I'm using this kit here that I've used on other boats, it's actually made for fuel tanks, but uh, we'll work on this as well. Here on the port side, I've already mounted the tank with the straps. Uh, started putting the barbs on. That'll be for the outlet for the pump. Uh, of course, the air vent and the, the fill, which I'm going to put on the bottom rather than the top because of the configuration of the deck fill. For the port side water tank, I've constructed this small door into the bulkhead uh, allowing me to access the transducer there. Uh, I just need to unbuckle the straps from the top. Uh, unfortunately you can only push it this far so you can't access this part from the top uh, only from the side. Um, also have made sure I only screw this uh, part of the bulkhead together if I needed to um, remove the water tank. Uh, I could easily do that. This is the chart table. Uh, this is the original wood. It was here. I just sanded it down, uh, removed the fiddles, um, and originally had the hinge underneath here so that it pivoted down when you slid it out. Uh, but I, what I plan to do is put in some flush hinges here so that it will fold upwards uh, and I'll have a flat surface even after while well, I can access the, um, the stove that'll be there. Also plan to kind of modify it so I can slide it out, access some storage back there that I plan to build. Um, I'm not sure if that'll be just storage or if it'll be a cooler. Uh, like I said, I plan to put a cooler over here next to the sink, but I'm starting to rethink that. It might be, um, might be another option to put it right over here. Um, 
as far as efficiency goes. Also, uh, because I like the inlay that I did here so much, um, I'm thinking that I might do one here on the chart table. Um, I did send a little aggressively in some spots, so uh, <laughs> I'll be able to <laughs> cover that up uh, with an inlay anyway. So um, let's see how that comes out. So I thought I'd do a step by step this time. Um, as you can see, the inlay is going to be this uh, sperm whale. And this was inspired by a picture that I found online um, of a medicine cabinet. And I'll leave a link to them in the description. Um, but all I did so far is just router out the basic shape, which I uh, traced around the inlay that I cut out of um, the veneer and then just went over it with a razor blade and then routed up the center. And this is the epoxied in inlay. Um, this was actually the second try. The first one that I uh, showed before was actually kind of screwed up. So I ended up doing it on another piece, uh, having to cut another piece of teak ply, which I was able to salvage from the old bulkheads. Um, so no worries there. Um, I think this will look a lot better once it's varnished. Here it is varnished. Nice and smooth. Looks great. Uh, put in some brass flush hinges. The stove will be going under here. Uh, this will be able to fold flat, kind of like that. I'll put some stainless steel sheets, sheeting on there. And here's a bit of detail on the inlay. This is uh, maple burl. So working on some of the storage here, um, I've taken uh, the teak that I've stripped out from uh, what was here in the galley, uh, made this frame to fit in here. Right now it's kind of just wedged in there and attached. Also made from the same wood, um, these doors, and they will go in there and kind of hinge, um, as opposed to, I was planning to do sliders, but I think this actually works out better, it even gives me a little bit more space. So we'll see how those look after they're sanded and varnished. I have dry fitted the Arigo stove, uh, it's nice and level on the gimbals. These gimbals are not uh, Origo gimbals, they're actually from another another stove. Uh, so it took a little bit of modification to get this uh, to sit right. Uh, but I think this is good. Also, in case it would knock down or even a capsize, this would not fall out because it's uh, this needs to be kind of moved in order to get it in and out. With the chart table on, the intention here was to mount the stove high enough that uh, this part, the pot holders, would sit flush against the top, prevent this from kind of rattling around as the boat moved. But uh, starting to think that it probably still will rattle, so I'll just probably put a sponge in there. Also, um, in the back here, uh, I've put this divider here get better perspective um, and this will be either an ice box or just plain storage I'm, I haven't decided what uh, but uh, it's pretty big a lot of volume so I think that'll work out either way the last part of the rough construction of this side of the galley was to add this uh, the bottom of the stove compartment here um, fit it in there with some cleats, as well as uh, I built this shallow drawer. There was enough room for that. It's wide, but uh, only about three inches high. So with that completed, I'm going to work on the other side. Uh, this will uh, be trimmed out with teak. There'll be a drawer face, uh, some teak along the sides and the, the bottom of the stove and such. And of course, the, the fiddle, the molding around the top. Um, that should be it.